Hey guys, today I'm talking about my first Amazon FBA product for 2021. It's in skincare and I'm talking about the full product research method I used and how I did the product development step by step. And uh, so you want to stay till the end of the video so you can get the full value. Let's get started. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. This is Farah. We talk about building business on Amazon on this channel. If you're interested in that, then please do subscribe. So let me explain why this is my first Amazon FBA product. Basically, I am a merchant seller on Amazon. I use Seller Fulfilled Prime and I have my own fulfillment facility. So I don't really use FBA to launch my products. I do it myself. I also supply to Amazon, which is for my dropship brand. So that's the reason this is my first FBA product. I have designed it, developed it. I've done the whole process you know, for FBA. It's a small product. It won't cost me too much in fees. It's a made in UK product. And uh, the reason I've done that is because I, I want something that is not very easy to copy by the you know, overseas sellers. Uh, that's one thing I really wanted to tackle because I have faced this problem throughout my uh, time on Amazon. It's always a problem because somebody will copy your product and you know just start selling the same kind of product and hijack your listings. And the other thing I wanted to tackle was you know supply chain issues because of Brexit and there are still so many problems that are uh, faced by the sellers every day because Brexit deal was really done the last minute. But we don't really know the rules. The rules are being made as we are going along, and that's why I wanted to put my money in a product that was made in UK and I would have less supply chain issues. That was my thought process. As you further get into the video, you will see that, you know, there were still issues. I wanted to give this a try and see how it changes my profitability year on year. As a merchant, you can operate on a lower profit margin on Amazon, but for FBA, you need higher profit margin products. And that's the difference most people, especially new sellers, don't understand and they pick low profit margin products and then it's really hard to get profitable on Amazon. For Amazon FBA, you need a product that's higher profit margin, at least 20 to 25 percent. That's bare minimum because you will need to give up a lot of margin uh, for Amazon FBA fees. You will need to pay for those fees from somewhere. So that's what I wanted to experiment with and see, like, you know, can I do this and can I create a product that would be uh, a premium product and can sell at a higher price? And can I make those margins? So I did my calculations and on the paper, it looked like it's possible, but we'll see. I've pursued this idea totally based on the long-term goal of starting another Amazon brand, which is around skincare. And the biggest trend of all that I've seen over the past uh, two, three years is supporting British manufacturing, British jobs. And, you know, people are really into it and they want affordable products that are made in the UK. And there is demand for that kind of stuff. So this particular product idea seemed to take care of all of these concerns of mine. <laughs> talk about how I found this product idea. I actually posted about it in this video. You can check it on my channel. I posted about it in July last year in 2020 as I was filming uh, a product research video for my channel and I really liked it. But on doing further research, I found that it's actually a very high competition, high demand uh, category on Amazon. And there is a lot of volume happening and it is dominated by big brands like L'Oreal and um, Garnier. So what I had to do, and this is a tip for you guys too, what I had to do was narrow down my search by keywords related to ingredients or keywords related to a skincare need, a particular need, or, you know, a, a particular trend that's building up like vegan skincare or natural skincare or a particular ingredient like, you know, vitamin C is quite popular. So I had to look for other kind of ingredients that were in demand, but not um, available on Amazon. So I looked elsewhere on other platforms uh, like Instagram and, you know, other big websites like Look Fantastic and stuff like what kind of new products are coming on those markets, but they're not available on Amazon. And the biggest trend of all, the biggest highlight uh, that I saw coming was, uh, you know, the launch of Kylie Skin. She launched, um, Kylie Jenner, she launched her skincare uh, website in 2020, which was basically a full range of skincare products. And not long after, I don't know who did it first, it was Huda Beauty or 
Kylie Jenner, but both those big makeup influencers, they launch skincare range. So that was, you know, people like me who are always have an eye on these sort of trends. Uh, I could tell that basically this is going to be big in the next two, three years because a lot of the brands would be, you know, trying to, um, you know, capitalize on all this interest in skincare that would be created by these two big beauty influencers. So not long after, in January 2021, we see that JLo has also brought out a skincare brand. So I, this was sort of validating my overall feeling about the, you know, starting a skincare range is that, you know, this is going to be a trend. And I had already seen uh, through my product research uh, using Jungle Scout that, you know, there was a lot of demand for uh, skincare products anyway on the platform. And it was dominated by, you know, the household names like L'Oreal and um, Garnier and stuff. But no influencer brands would actually work with Amazon for, you know, uh, obvious reasons. But um, the thing is, this whole traffic is driven around Internet, you know, wherever people are looking for these sort of products. So we, because we always say that Amazon is a keyword driven platform, it's a search driven platform. So you can actually drive traffic from Amazon if you do your PPC campaigns right. You, your products can rank for certain keywords. So it was a no brainer for me to actually, you know, really, um, you know, go all in to developing this product. So this was my keyword research process for, um, you know, finding the particular ingredient I wanted to use and then uh, it's it was just a matter of finding a manufacturer. Another thing, in my opinion, that gives traction to this whole, uh, you know, skincare trend is because of the pandemic. We're all at home and, uh, you know, self-care has been a major trend. So people are investing and, you know, buying these sort of products that make them feel good and, you know, looked after. And it's like, you know, skin needs to look good without makeup. So all of these trends are like, you know, pointing towards like, um, you know, a boom in sales of skincare in 2021 and maybe next two, three years. So I started looking for manufacturers. I had already posted this video in July and I was already interested into, you know, looking for a good uh, UK based manufacturers. So I started my research online and after looking at a few uh, manufacturers, the problem with UK manufacturer was the prices were quite high and nobody wanted to talk unless it was an order of at least a thousand units. Uh, that was their minimum order for any type of product. And so after doing quite a long research, you know, a few um, nights I stayed up, you know, on the internet looking up uh, manufacturers, I found this one manufacturer, I emailed them and they had um, basically a private label um, range and their minimum order was 200 units. And I was like, great, that's exactly what I'm looking for. And I just wanted to work with a private label company because I don't want to develop my own formulations. I just want, uh, somebody's tested formula and I just want to private label that and I was looking to work with natural ingredients and so it was uh, after a bit of a research I found somebody um, and then I placed my order for my samples so that whole process actually took me about four weeks uh, and I placed my order for the samples and that came within a week so we were somewhere in August by that time. And then I used that sample on my own skin for a full month. I wanted to see if there are going to be any adverse reactions. I have sensitive skin. So uh, I did not find any, you know, bad reaction and it was a very gentle product. So I was happy to use it on my own skin and I was um, happy to go ahead with this manufacturer. Uh, my order was placed with a manufacturer somewhere in September 2020 and i paid the deposit that was about 50 percent of the you know total order amount i already um, had paid the manufacturer and i was told the lead time is going to be six weeks that means i would get the product after you know uh, once they start manufacturing uh, we have completed the design process they will start manufacturing and from that time it will be six weeks and i will get the my order delivered at that time so I was expecting the order to be delivered to me sometime end of November. But what ended up happening was they took uh, four weeks to actually approve my design. So from so 
the whole of October was spent in, you know, emails going back and forth and uh, me giving them the logo and, and the colors and design um, box packaging, um, you know, all of that, that was included in the price. The packaging design was included in the price, which was a good thing. So I, uh, we basically were going back and forth in emails and we just uh, finalized the, the product uh, label and the pack box packaging in four weeks. And that could have taken a lot less time if I had actually outsourced it. But because it was included in the price by the manufacturer, that was their offer. So I actually just went ahead with that and stayed with the manufacturer. Let me know in comments below if any of you are going through, uh, you know, production process and the sort of problems you're facing because it's never smooth sailing. You know, things always go wrong. The thing that went wrong with me was uh, after approving the design and packaging design, I was told that because I my order has been delayed in the production, um, you know, schedule, the bottle I chose for my, uh, you know, my product is sold out, and so I have to choose a different bottle. Um, so that was a bit of a bummer. I needed, uh, I really wanted the gold top. I couldn't get it. I had to choose a silver top bottle, and so you know, that just goes to show that, you know, it's never smooth sailing. Things always go wrong. Something always, you know, it's not comes out right the way you want and you need to adapt and you just need to keep the process going forward. By this time, I was already expecting some sort of delay in production too, because I thought the design process hasn't been very smooth and, you know, um, you know, they could have placed an order for the bottle for me, but they didn't want to do it and they made me actually change the bottle. So I was expecting more problems with this manufacturer, but I was just keeping my cool and the production actually took about eight weeks instead of six. And when I actually received the pictures of the, the, the batch that was finished for me, there was a problem with the packaging, the way it was cut. It was overhanging a, a tiny bit, like half a centimeter on one side. And they sent me a picture saying that, do you want this product delivered? It's ready. Uh, there's just a slight problem. And I said, no, like, I don't want this. You need to fix the packaging. And by this time we were at the end of November and there was no way I was going to make the, you know, pre-Christmas launch time. Uh, I, I had made my peace with it and I told them to upgrade the packaging for me and I wanted proper packaging, no overhanging, you know, bits because you don't sell a pre premium product that way. And especially for skincare, packaging is so important. It's everything. So they had to redo my whole packaging and I missed my Christmas launch time and now we are here in February and my product is still not launched. So I wanted to like uh, sort of summarize my experience of working with a Chinese manufacturer compared to an English manufacturer and the you know the eagerness and how quick they are to respond Chinese uh, manufacturers unmatched they're very professional they really help you sort of going into the process of approvals they get things right at the time but uh, the, 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 the pros of English manufacturers is that like, you know, he actually told me before dispatching the product, there was a problem. Whereas my, with my experience with Chinese manufacturers is that sometimes when they have made a mistake with your production, they would, if you don't have somebody doing the quality control, they would just pack up that product and send it to you. And then you just end up with a badly produced batch. You won't be able to sell it the same way you would have sold a properly produced product. So that has been, you know, sort of a learning curve that, you know, uh, the English uh, manufacturer was a bit more, uh, you know, honest about their mistake and they corrected it even though that caused a full six weeks delay in uh, the actual delivery of their order. So this is what I've learned from the past six months working with and uh, with a British manufacturer, with an English manufacturer, is that, you know, they, there definitely will be delays. You know, the lead times are not going to be what they were promised. Um, you know, you expect that sort of delay in China anyway, but uh, it's the same thing. I think everywhere delays happen and, you know, uh, people need to adapt and usually things will be fine. And in terms of communication, uh, the eagerness to work and how quickly they respond, 
uh, I think nobody can beat the Chinese manufacturer on that. They are really responsive and, you know, they try to help you as much as they can because they're eager to get the orders. They have, you know, all these full setups there in China and so they need orders coming in fast. So this is what's happening with my Amazon FBA product in skincare. I can't really share the product itself with you guys because I'm still going through the trademark process. And I will be documenting that on this channel. Um, let me know in the comments below uh, what you guys think. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. But the lesson is, it's never plain sailing. Things don't always turn out as you hoped they would. And you need to adapt and learn and, you know, just keep the process moving forward. Well, hope you guys found this video useful. I will see you guys next time. Bye.